Hi, I'm Dale Calvin, the writer and co-creator of Night Raft, currently on Kickstarter. And you're watching Two Geeks Talking, Rapid Fire Edition. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to Rapid Fire. The concept of Rapid Fire is simple. 11 questions, 9 to 15 minutes for the interview itself. And we get to talk with creative and talented people in the entertainment industry. So who is our first guest today? And our first guest today is none other than Daniel Calban, creator of Night Wrath. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. You know, first off, I have to say, I, I love the art. I love what you're doing with the comic itself. We're going to dive right into these questions here. But for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person and Night Wrath, tell us who you are and what it's all about. Hi, I'm Dale Calvin. I'm the writer of Night Raft, which is currently on Kickstarter, as well as American Dreams. Uh, Night Raft is basically a man with little confidence gets kidnapped, experimented on by evil mercenaries, and has turned into this hulking anti-hero that is at war with crime and his two contradictory personalities because his heroic self, his heroic self is this big, brash personality and his normal self is this kind of timid, no self-confidence person. I have to ask, though, when it comes to regarding Night Wrath itself, you know, why did you want to make this comic uh, reality? So basically, I wanted to write something for Gabe Eskimo, the artist, Gabe Eskimo Santos. And I wanted to write something to his preferences and strengths. And so we were going back and forth, like, what do we want to write and what do we want to do? And we basically came up with the idea. He showed me some concept arts. I got my gears turning and I got his gears turning. And so I said, why do we do like a giant hulking anti-hero kind of like the pit or the max? And then he just went back and he drew this concept art, which was basically a winner from like the first get-go. And I was like, yep, that's it. And at the time, it was just called Savage Knight. And then it was like, we're into the pencil and inking phase. We're like, oh no, we need to change the name. This name's terrible. So we went with Night Wrath. What is your creative kryptonite? Procrastination. I'm a horrible procrastinator. I will go down a Wikipedia hole and there'll be like no way to pull me back up for a good couple of hours because I just go like one time I was free, I felt something like something like very mild and also I'm going to like really esoteric like materials. I don't know why I got down that hole. It's like click, 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 click. And all of a sudden I'm looking at this weird shit possible on Wikipedia. And then of course there's the you know whole social media. You get just sucked in. I think for me, it's t TikTok is my rabbit hole. I just, I can spend hours on that. That's crazy. For me, it's Facebook and Twitter. So that's where I promote the most for the book too. What is the second wisest piece of advice that has stuck with you in your creative career? Actually from the Jim Lee uh, Twitch stream, I guess someone asked him, what's the best way to break into comics? And he, he literally just said, just draw. Or like in my case, it would be just write. It's a very simple statement, but it's really the truest statement you really need to do it because if you don't do the work, you're never going to get anywhere. It's like you have to actually put in the work to get noticed and to get, make a career out of it. If, you don't, if you're just sitting on your butt saying, oh, I want to do this and never do it, you're never going to get anywhere. You're never going to make your goal. You're not going to make your plans and you're just, you're just sitting there just saying, oh, it'd be so great if I could do so-and-so. But like you could do it so-and-so. It's a lot of work, it takes a lot of practice, but you can do it. You don't have to, you know, get up your butt and do it. What career would you choose if you couldn't do what you're currently doing? I wanted as a kid first to be an Egyptologist because mm -hmm. I got into Egypt, into Egypt as a kid because my mom got me a book, kid's book on the discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb. It also did hurt that we were down the block from the Book of the Museum and their fabulous Egyptian collection. So that really got my, my claws into ancient Egypt. I also wanted to be a film director. And I wanted to go to school to be a film director, and I, that ended up happening. Went to school for mass communications. But I said it was like my consolation prize. And um, comics for me is a, kind of a way for me to do what I want to do as a film director. Just as I say, it's 22 page movies, mm -hmm. but it's made for the comic book medium. Plus, you know, what stuff I learned from movies, I can incorporate into my writing, like, you know, cut here or angle here or movies and plays and everything help with learning how to write dialogue. What was an early experience where you learned that language had power? Probably when I was very young. It's like something that's probably so deep back in my memory that I really can't recall it. But when I was a little kid, I was probably 
amazed just by story time in the Brooklyn Public Library, just raptured with, you know, hearing stories. Plus, I was a early reader. I was reading by the time I was four. I just loved reading in general. And I just loved the written word and spoken word and everything in between. What did you first create that made you realize, yes, I could do this as a career? If I don't want to go too far back, you know, because you're a kid, you can do, like, for fifth grade, I had to write a story a week or a story a month, or I forget what was the time period, for, like, a collected thing that would be done for us at the end of the year. And I basically serialized a small novel, a small fantasy novel. I got a good grade, so I'm like, hey, that could work. A couple of fantasy ideas, like, way back in the brain, I want to go pull short someday, but, you know, I'll have to get there. When I was in college and I started getting back into comics, I wrote a screenplay, a super screenplay, which in retrospect was very good. But I'm like, hey, I can do this. And I wrote fan scripts and then my own stuff. And really, the first thing that really came out of it that was my first real, I can do this. I had a Western web comic which ran roughly one and a half issues worth mm-hmm. of material. And it was between that and American Dreams. I went with American Dreams. Also, the real thing I said, oh, yeah, I can make a career out of this, was when I had issue one of the American Dreams in my hand. It's like, mm. yes. It's always fun to see uh, an idea come to fruition as well, too, especially the, the physical final version, I'm sure. Yeah. Were you excited for it when you got it? Oh, yeah, definitely. And it's like, it's like, yes, I can do this. I can possibly make a career out of this. It's the first big step. It's, I got it from little steps, now I got the first big one. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? Mel Brooks. Mm. My fellow funny short dude from Brooklyn. He's like, he, he's like this kid who basically came from the poverty role in Williamsburg, climbed his way up the ladder, made it to like the top to be a Borscht Belt comic, and then into the writer's room at you know your show of shows in Caesar's Hour, and then to be this big comedic legend that he is today. That's very inspiring. No, it is kind of related to comics. It's a different kind of comic. <laughs> Professionally, you are successful. You have created multiple comic books, and you are going to create many more in the future. Do you consider yourself personally successful? And this is what question actually gave me a lot of thought. It's like, at the end, it could always be better. I'm not going to go into like hyper detail or anything. But things I wish I could have done in my life that could be easier. Like, I would love to learn how to drive. I still haven't learned to drive yet. Because I live in New York City, it's not a telling her that I need to get around. But it could have made my life a lot more enriching if I knew how to drive and I could have a little more freedom to travel. Because otherwise I'm kind of relegated to, you know, train, plane, and, you know, the good graces of a taxi cab. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failure? Well, I mean, we all beat ourselves up to a certain extent. I, mean, I do myself, but after a while, you know, I'll mope and I'll sigh and I'll it'll eat up at me for a little bit. It, it happens to everyone. But ultimately, I just have to get up and dust myself off and I have to try again. It's, that's the simplest way you have to do it. It's like you can't let it just eat you up and paralyze you. You have to take that step one more time and then one more time again and one more time again. Eventually, you'll get that door open. The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? I'm going to quote uh, legendary Broadway producer and director Hal Prince here, or at least how I put it in their review that was based off his life. And he basically said it was do the work. You, as I said earlier, you have to do the work. If you don't do it, it's not going to happen. If you don't do the comic book, if you don't write it, you're not going to get someone to draw it. You're not going to get someone to color it. You're not going to get someone to letter it. And you're not going to get it out there. It's just going to be sitting in your brain or on a shelf or something. And if you're just sitting there waiting for it to happen, it's not going to happen. You actually have to make this effort to get it out there and push it. You might have to stumble a bit. You might have to fall a bit, but you get yourself back up and you write it something new. You get something out there. Probably that gets your name out there. Kickstarter, for example, is the best way to become a new comic writer because once you self-publish, you're published. You've done the work, but you can't get to even Kickstarter if you haven't ran the script, got on the artist, got on the colorist, got on the letterer, got on someone to help you put the whole thing together. And then even after you're, done, you're self-published with your Kickstarter, you have to do the shipping and everything. So if you're just sitting there like oh, going, oh, I wish I could do it. It's like, you can stop wishing and just do it. This isn't a virtually a Disney movie where we're going to have a 
that was going to wave a wand and boom, you're a comic writer. Unfortunately, we have to do the work ourselves. And that's, and I'd like to point out, uh, Prairie God parents and Fairy Tales often point out, I can only do help you part of the way. The rest is up to you. Tell us about the Kickstarter and, and why you got started with it and, and how has your journey been so far? Well, I did it last year for, well, I was doing it for my American Dreams back when I was a, I had a small publisher and then I started self-publishing myself last year because of reasons. But Kickstarter, I think, is the most efficient way to get stuff out because you don't deal with a gatekeeper at a publisher. Independent publishers, large and small, are sometimes a tough nut to cr- crack. So this way you can build yourself a body of work just by raising the funds on Kickstarter. Though it does help to at least put out some of the majority of the costs initially out of your own pocket. You're not just hoping everything to be on the back end. Pay a good chunk of your production out of your own pocket. That's a big tip. But NIRAF has been doing well. Like my, This has actually blown my last Kickstarter like out of the water. <laughs> Whoa. Like We hit our goal in like four days. I, and I wasn't even planning it to even hit that quickly. I was, so I was like a little, oh, they like it. <laughs> and it's just been like this real massive... Success, for me, at least. Hey, if I've done that whole idea of build the work. You do your first Kickstarter, I succeed, and you fulfill. You do the next one, and fulfill it. It goes to a higher level, and so on, and so on, and so on. Well, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking Rapid Fire. For those that want to support you in the future, and, of course, with the campaign itself, where can we find you, and how can we support you? You can find me at Daniel Calvin on Facebook. You can also find me at the American Dreams Comics Facebook page and the Atlas Studios Comics Facebook page at Daniel Calvin on Twitter and D Calvin on uh, Instagram. Uh, you can also find me at atlasstudios.square.site, I believe is our web store. I want to thank you for taking the time to be on this interview of Two Geeks Talking Rapid Fire. You can find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, twogeekstalking.com or tgtmedia.com and on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash TGT Media. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening, watching on Two Geeks Talking.